Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna show you how to fillet a swordfish and then we're gonna show you how to cut it into individual steaks when you cut the loin out of it. We were blessed to be out yesterday. It was a very long day. We'll link that video at the end of this one. Um, but it turned out to be almost a 20 hour day from the time we got up in the morning to go out fishing. And we got one bite all day and we were blessed to land that fish. It was a 49 inch fish. Uh, the legal, the minimum size that it could be, uh, it's got to be 47 inches or greater. So this guy was legal by two inches. This is probably, I know you look at it and you might think it's a small fish, but this is probably a five to six year old fish um, out of their lifespan, which is really about 15 years that they live. So this guy, even though he looks small, has probably lived a, a third of his life already. Um, but it was a long day. Uh, we had one bite and we, we got the bite at five o'clock in the afternoon and we were able to land the fish on the boat at, uh, at 6.10 and then we had a two hour ride back. But uh, we're gonna go ahead and, show, and get started here and show you uh, everything that you need to do to fillet this fish. One of the easiest fish that you're ever gonna clean. He's got one spine, similar to how humans have a spine right down the middle, like how kingfish, mackerel would, and the rest of their body is nothing but meat. Um, and really what you need, we've got a bucket of ice. We've got an ice brine with water and ice. Uh, I'm a real uh, stickler for food safety. And so when you're cleaning your fish, I would highly recommend that you don't, you don't leave the fish out in the sun. We carry in another video, uh, we, we talk about what we take on the boat and we always ride with four to 600 pounds of ice in our fish box. We catch a fish, the fish immediately goes into ice so that they're chilled and we never run into the meat of the fish getting into the danger zone, which is you don't want your meat to be a uh, drop above 41 degrees because that's where bacteria could start to grow. So we've got the fish. I would tell you guys, get a real sharp knife. We love Dexter knives. Uh, we've been using this even from our commercial fishing days. These are excellent knives. And then a cutting table. We don't have a fillet table big enough for the swordfish. So we use an innovative alternative which is our picnic table. My wife loves it. The other thing guys besides a good knife that I would tell you is get yourself a good uh, sponge that you would clean dishes with. And we, we saw a video that RJ Boyle posted and after we saw that video, we've never done a swordfish without cleaning it, right? Swordfish have a lot of bacteria on their meat. Very, I don't know if you could see the, all that stuff on my glove there. You could see it coming off of the meat. And we saw a video where RJ talks about cleaning it with a sponge and the, the outside of the fish looks night and day difference, right? Very clean and white. And so when we cut it into steaks, we leave that skin on, right? When we cook it and, uh, and after we saw that, we never wanted to do it again. So we'll go ahead and, and show you guys how to do that. It's, it's quite simple. You just want to wet the fish and you just want to start scrubbing them. And you, this will get all of that black off of the fish. Now, when you scrub their skin, it's very rough like sandpaper. So when you go towards the tail, it's smooth. And when you come up towards the head, it's when you're gonna start seeing it, the roughness of the skin. So you wanna go ahead and wipe them down like this. And then we're gonna spray it off with some water. and all of that black has come off of his skin. Now we're gonna go ahead and do the other side. And you could see all of that black stuff coming off there. All right, so now we're ready to clean it. And guys, I'll tell you, I, um, you know, like I said earlier, we, we've got to clean them on this table and it is hot out here, man. It is 
feels like 105. But, um, you know, the easiest way would be to have a, a way that you can hang them by the tail and you could clean them. We obviously don't have that in the backyard, um, you know, or don't have anything that we could attach it without having to build something. And that's definitely not gonna go with my wife. Uh, won't be an attractive feature in our backyard, so we use our picnic table. I like to go ahead and cut off these fins. This makes it easier when you are cleaning your, uh, your fish. And then we like to cut right here at the tail. And go ahead and remove the tail out of the way. And then we'll put it up to this camera here so you can see that really it's one bone down the middle. And again, he's got that bone down the middle. You're gonna fillet it like any other fish that you would. You're just gonna start going right along that bone all the way up. Now, if it's a bigger fish, guys, you know, these fish, the size is really gonna jump. This guy's probably 70 pounds, 60 pounds, but their girth starts getting real big. Then what I would tell you is you cut them into chunks, right? You start filleting, you're gonna cut a chunk like this, and then you've got this beautiful piece of meat right here, and we're gonna go ahead and dump this in our ice water so it remains cold and we don't lose any of the temperature of the fish while we're cleaning it. Check out that piece of meat. And guys, if you've never eaten swordfish, fresh swordfish is one of my favorite fish to eat. It, the taste is unbelievable. You can grill these on the barbecue. They keep their firmness. Uh, and it's just such a tasty and juicy fish. We're gonna go ahead and flip them over to the other side. And then we're gonna put them in the ice and we're gonna go over to our fillet table and we're gonna show you exactly how to cut it into steaks. Now guys, normally when it's uh, stone crab season, we keep the carcass and we use it in our stone crab traps. But I'll tell you, my parents love to do is they take, if you wanna make soup, this is unbelievable. This, this right here will give you a heck of a pot of swordfish soup or like a swordfish stew that you can make at home if you want to, to do it as well. You would cut these up into little pieces, boil it, and then you can peel all the meat off of the bone and the cartilage that it has right here. And then you're gonna put that water through a strainer and you're gonna use that water as a stock to go ahead and make your soup or your swordfish too. So we're gonna clean this up and then we're gonna move over to the fillet table and show you how to cut it into steaks. Stay tuned. All right guys, now we're gonna get down to what you want is to show you how to cut it. We like to cut this in one inch steaks and it's very simple. You're just gonna come right here and again, guys, this might look a little weird. We talked about it in another video, but I'm left-handed, so as I cut, it'll be backwards if you're a righty. But you're just gonna cut all the way down, and you've got these beautiful steaks that are ready to throw on the grill. We're gonna go ahead and finish this, and we're gonna go ahead and fire up the grill. I'll tell you guys, all you really need is some olive oil that you're gonna use as a binder so that your seasoning sticks to it and get your grill nice and hot and you just throw these on. And I'll tell you, we have tried every seasoning that we have in our cabinet. We've tried teriyaki, you name it, we've tried it. And it is we, we, unbelievable. One of the best tasting fish that you're ever gonna eat in the ocean is a swordfish. Check out these beautiful swordfish steaks. I cannot wait to tear into one of these.
There you go, guys. That's how simple it is to fillet and cut your swordfish into steaks. Hope this helps you when you catch your next swordfish. Check out our Swordfish 101 playlist. We'll attach it at the end of this video where we show you everything on what you need to do to catch your swordfish.